Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Chris here uh, with another video. I kind of wanted to take a bit of time to get my thoughts together on this particular one because it's kind of nuanced. It's going to be kind of tricky. Um, it's another sports video. I know, I know, sports. Sports, but it is what it is. And it's the Brian Flores situation. I wanted to do a bit of a deep dive into that and give my thoughts on it because there's a lot going on there. The biggest part of the story, or the main part of it, kind of begins where he was fired as the coach of, Miami, coach of Miami Dolphins. Kind of shocked everybody when he got fired because he had just come off a season where after the Dolphins started 1-7, and seven, they won 8 of the last 9 games. They were in the playoff run up until the very end of the season. So you're like, why would you fire a coach that just won like, eight of their last nine games, including eight straight. What the, why would you do that? So reports start coming out of Miami that he was difficult to work with, according to the GM and the owner. They just kind of wanted to go in a different direction. Okay, sure, that's fine. That's their, that's their thing. If they want to do that, they have the right to do that. Uh, kind of started back when the Dolphins drafted Tua Tagliavoa out of Alabama. Um, apparently, Flores wanted Justin Herbert out of Oregon uh, instead of Tua, who went the next, next pick to the Chargers. You can look at the results on the field and see the difference between the two. Like, I'm not going to trash Tua. He's been hurt, inconsistent. Justin Herbert, they don't have the same offensive personnel. Um, you can make that argument for that being the difference. To me, looking at those two, I didn't like Tua coming out of Alabama anyway. I didn't think he was that good of a quarterback in college. I thought Justin Herbert was the better quarterback. So far, it has proven true in the pro ranks as well. That's my personal opinion on those two quarterbacks. If I had to pick between the two, I'd have taken Justin Herbert as well. But the ownership didn't want... Herbert, they wanted to, uh, they drafted to, uh, you see what happened as a result. Uh, so that's all on the field. You can look at the numbers and you can make your own decision there. Um, the part I want to get to, or there are a couple parts of this. So that happens. Um, he files a lawsuit against the NF, his filed a lawsuit against the NFL and specific teams, the New York Giants the Miami Dolphins, and the Denver Broncos. The Dolphins, he's alleging that they off ownership offered him $100,000 for every game they lost. That's game fixing. That's illegal. And if that part's true, Stephen Ross should be forced out of the league as an owner. He should be forced to sell his, his franchise. You can't have that. That's unacceptable. Um... Paying coaches to lose? Like, what the fuck is that? I wonder how Vegas feels about that part. Sports betting community can't be too happy about that. But here's the other thing I want to know about that. Stephen A. Smith brought this up, and I could ask the same question. Are there any other coaches that have been offered this? That'll come out and say that they've been offered money to lose from their ownership. I want to know that particular part. So that that's the dolphin end of it. Um, the Giants part <clears throat> and the Broncos kind of goes into the whole Rooney rule aspect of job interviews. Now, for those who don't know this, the Rooney rule is a rule that the NFL set up. That basically says before you make a coaching hire or an executive hiring for an executive, you have to interview at least two minority candidates. Um, it was meant to kind of bring in diversity into those roles because it wasn't happening. At the time of this rule, there were like eight black head coaches when it was instituted. As of right now, as I sit here shooting this video, there is one black head coach in the NFL left and only three minorities. The black coach is 
Mike Tomlin in Pittsburgh. The minority is Ron Rivera. They are Robert Sala in New York with the Jets and Ron Rivera with the uh, now Commanders in D.C. So since that rule was instituted, you have three minorities, one black coach. It, it, so it, it's not a matter. And there are qualified candidates who could do these jobs. The problem is they're not getting opportunities. Now, the Giants, the situation kind of comes up. And this is I feel bad for Bill Belichick in this. He sent the text message to Brian Flores. Basically, like, congratulations on the New York job. And he hadn't interviewed yet. His interview was scheduled for a couple of days after the text. He received that text. He's like, and Belichick's like, kind of like, wait, what? And he goes back, oh, 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 I, I fucked this up. Oh, they're hiring Brian Dayball. Oh, shit. I'm so sorry, dude. And Forrest is like, so why were they going to interview me? Like, what the fuck is the point? You've already made your hire choice. So you're bringing me in as a first sham interview. The Broncos, apparently, according to the lawsuit, John Elway, who is an executive with the Broncos, showed up an hour late to the interview location and showed up in a state of intoxication. If you or I showed up to a job interview and hour late and drunk well first off if you show up an hour late you're not getting that interview they're not going to even see you for that interview at that point they've already moved past you you've already blown it and if you show up drunk you can forget any chance of any opportunity there or pretty much anywhere else that you know you're you're fucked for an executive to show up in that condition in, in an hour late? Like, how serious was that interview? So it leads the question, like, what the fuck was... What are... What is this? Are these interviews being done seriously? And honestly, the answer is no. They're not. You can't be seriously interviewing these minority candidates... When you're showing up an hour late and drunk, allegedly, or you've already made your mind who you're going to hire before you even get him in there. And this brings up another coach. I'm not going to, this Brian Flores just got screwed. David Culley, who was the coach for the Texans, he only got a season with them and he had them playing well with their best player, not even on the field. Deshaun Watson never took the field for them. He's their best player. He was winning games with David Mills, a quarterback. You fire him after one year and promote Josh McCown, who's never coached anywhere. I think he may have coached in high school as like a quarterback coach. But he's just really stopped playing football. And you're going to give him your head coaching job? Are you, really? You've hired all these defensive and offensive coordinators from, like, the the Bills and, like, the Rams and stuff like that. All these coaching trees from all these other coaches are getting these jobs. But these minority candidates who are working their way through these systems aren't getting opportunities. Jim Caldwell. He was a damn good coach. Hasn't gotten the chance to coach again since his last job. You know, Romeo Cornell, um, guys who are good coaches, good minority coaches, assistants, can't get interviews, can't get opportunities. But Josh McDonald is getting another job in Oakland? Do you see how bad of a coach he was? Like, if I'm the Baltimore Ravens, Right now, I hire Brian Flores and I bring him in as an assistant to Harbaugh and I guarantee him the spot when Harbaugh retires or he gets fired to groom him to take over that spot. 
I give him those guarantees, and I do it right now because he's a damn good coach. I would I would fire Harbaugh now and hire Brian Flores if I'm the Ravens. I'm not a Harbaugh fan, but if I were, that's the move I would make. I would make that move today and bring that guy into my fold as some sort of coach with the promises that when Harbaugh hangs it up or gets decides to walk away or whatever, he gets that job. If I'm Pittsburgh, I'm making that same call. When Tomlin decides to hang it up, I'm getting him in place to take over that spot too. That's how I would handle that. Because he's too good of a coach. And this whole lawsuit thing may cost him everything. But it also may be the change that we need to see because it's obvious that the Rooney rule is a fucking joke. We've all said it's a joke. I've said it's a joke for years. Like, they're going to interview this guy for a sham, but they've already got their hire made up. We all know they're going to hire who they want. Like, you already know. But at least give the opportunity. Like, Pittsburgh, they weren't going to hire Mike Tomlin. Just to go back to that. But he wowed them in the interview to the point where, like, we got to get this guy. We got to bring this guy in. He's that good. So they hired him. So, you know. I don't know. It's compli- it's a complicated situation. Um, Hugh Jackson had also said something about the Browns, but he retracted that apparently, so. And the league's apparently really looking at this whole, like, like price fixing, uh, game fixing thing, because it's a serious black guy on the sport. The bigger black guy... Is is the Rooney rule and how that needs to be addressed. But ultimately, like, there's nothing Goodell can do. The Players Association can't do, can't do anything about it. It's on the owners and executives to make the right call. And truly give minority coaches a chance. Because you might, you might be throwing a guy who could be your next Jimmy Johnson, your next Bill Cower, your next... John Harbaugh, your next really good winning coach out the door for some recycled shit, some recycled ass coach who ain't worth it or somebody who's not ready for the job yet because of dumb shit. Uh, I just wanted to chime in my thoughts on the Brian Fuller situation because I think it's important, especially in this month. To kind of talk about that. Um, it's a big deal. Um, a really big deal. And it should be discussed. And it should be talked about. And they, the league and the NFL needs to look at this. Seriously. And implement the right changes. To make sure that the right people. Are getting. Op- not only opportunities. Not only interviews. But are getting actual jobs. I've always say I always say this about any job I've ever interviewed for. All I need is the opportunity to come in the door. All you need to do is open it for me. I'll kick it the rest of the way in. And that's how I've been at any job I've ever been at. If I don't know the job, if I'm not as qualified as the next person that comes in, that's cool. But if we're equal, all things are equal. I always sell myself as being the better person. And I just say, look, I just need the opportunity. My work will stand on its own and it'll prove you made the right decision if you give it to me. That's my mindset. Um, But those are my thoughts on that. Um, Like I said, NFL, if there's like any type of game fixing, Stephen Ross got to go. If the stuff about the Browns is true, if they investigate that and it's true, Jimmy has them, gotta go. Um, some Vegas people are probably really pissed about that one. Uh, so Steve Ross may be getting a visit from some like big like mafia dudes. I don't know. Um, and when your coach kind of has an idea of like what to look for in a quarterback, maybe listen to him. 
Because it looks like he was right about Tua not being the guy. Like I said, that story will play out and at the end of their careers. We can do the comparison. Just from what I've seen, he was right about that. But um, anyway, that's all I've got today. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Get vaxxed. Get boosted. We can end this thing. This COVID thing, we can end it. We just got to do our part. You got to do your part. I've already done mine. Um, anyway, take it easy. Peace.